everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time news video. Now in today's video we're going to recap all of the major news stories revolving around the Wheel of Time TV show over the past few weeks. From the release date of the show to the promotional materials surrounding it, an interview with Rafe Judkins, a potential actress for Elaine Tricand, some comments from Brandon Sanderson and more. There's actually quite a few small stories to get to in today's video. Sorry I've been a bit absent the last two weeks. I have had some health issues and lost my voice completely. Got it back and then lost it completely again. Hoping that is all behind me. If I sound a little hoarse, deal with it. But before getting into the video, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time related content. We're gonna be ramping things up on the channel here in the next few months before the release of the show and I'm excited for some of the stuff that I've got planned. Big thank you to the video's sponsor, Magic Spoon, but more on them in a little bit. Let's hit the spoiler warning. Today's video is gonna carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers running all the way through The Great Hunt, the second book of the series. If you have not read both the first and second books of The Wheel of Time, you're gonna be spoiled. Maybe come back and watch this after you've done that. So let's go ahead and start things off with JordanCon 2022. Now, as most of you have seen, JordanCon 2021 just ended in Atlanta. It was an amazing time. What many of you may not have known is that JordanCon is typically held every year in April, and it was pushed back this year due to COVID. Now, what that means is, is then in less than nine months, we're gonna be back for JordanCon 2022. So I'm super excited to be back with everybody especially for a more normal Jordan Con. There were a lot of restrictions this year, and so it made the con a little different, I think, than what it would normally be, even though it was my first time. I know a ton more people are gonna be able to make it, and that's something that has me fairly excited. Which brings me to getting registered. The venue can only hold between 1,000 and 1,200 people for the convention, and although there were only like 500 people there for this past Jordan Con, that was due to the folks running the convention artificially limiting the number of people who could attend. In Jordan Con 2019, prior to the pandemic they had almost a thousand people in attendance so if you couple that with the fact that with the show is also going to be out by then and the interest in the convention will probably be at an all-time high it is a foregone conclusion that the convention will sell out and be at full capacity what that means for you is that if you are planning on going you need to get your membership now fortunately this is also the cheapest time to do it head to jordan con's website i'll have it linked in the description of the video and get your membership now for just 50 bucks. You'll be able to head to the convention. I'll be able to hang out with you. I'm excited to do that, and you won't be left out. Speaking of JordanCon, let's talk a little bit more about this past one, but not about the convention itself, but actually some comments that Brandon Sanderson made while at the convention. Now, this information comes courtesy of Weaves of the Wheel, which recorded a segment of Brandon's interview while at JordanCon. He was asked a number of questions about the upcoming Amazon adaptation, and his answers were somewhat interesting. I'm gonna hit some main points here, and then I'll give you my thoughts on them. If you want a more in-depth analysis and discussion, make sure to check out the Dusty Wheel episode that discussed the topic in depth. I'll have that linked in the description of this video. But let me go ahead and play the clip of Brandon answering the question, and then we'll break it all down. Any, any, uh, I guess there's a question. What are you most excited about for the Wheel of Time TV series? Um, oh, ooh, episode six is my favorite. Oh, okay, because you read the... I've read all the scripts. All of the yeah. scripts, right. Yeah, okay. Um, Do you remember the title of that episode? I'm not going to give that a spoiler, I'm sorry. Okay, well, it, it would that's be been announced. Oh, they have announced They've announced the title. They have announced the title. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember what it was anymore. Okay, but it was episode six. Was it's episode your, six your is favorite. my favorite. Cool. Uh, episode seven's really good. Okay. Episode one and two are both really good too. Okay, cool. So, cool. Uh, there are no bad episodes in season one. Awesome. Um, awesome. I haven't read season two, all of them, so I can't say. Sure. But um, you started it. I've, I've read the first two. Okay. Um, but season one, I would like, I'll go beyond that. All of season one, yep, every episode is above average oh. in Great. good television that I have seen. That's good. Um, That's good so, to hear. Uh, so no whammies. Um, sure. And uh, That's definitely good. The writing is really solid. Um, the most, among the fan base, the there are going to be discussions about the changes made. Right. Um, like I said, they're on a level around like uh, the Tolkien movies. Okay. Um, and there are some significant changes. And there's some changes significant changes in, in the Rings, Tolkin movies. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would call them about equivalent to that. So more okay. changes than Game of Thrones. Um, um, more like uh, Lord of the Rings films. Uh, less than something like iRobot or one of those oh, kind of sure. just completely off the rails things. Right. So, right. Uh, I've been viewing it 
as a different turning of the wheel. I think that's a good and way that to look just at fixed, it. That's, that's a fun Because way to do none it. of the changes are such that I wouldn't see them oh, fitting in question. another mm -hmm. turning of the wheel, sure. so to speak. Sure. Um, so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. But uh, I mean, it's really good. I'm so excited. Uh, so. You haven't actually seen any of them. No, the only parts I've seen are the ones that were being filmed while I was in Prague. Oh, okay, cool. So you uh, just got to watch some I just got to watch some of that. Cool. And um, Maureen is so good. Oh, I'm uh, excited she, for Maureen. Uh, Rosalind yes. is... Rosalind Pike. She is a really Rosalind, good yeah. as Maureen. Like, just... She, she seems like she'd be a good Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, that's it, great. That's a, that's a casting choice on the level of Ian McKellen as Gandalf. Oh, she's really? Wow. so good in the role. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so. good. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the others are kind of like lesser-known actors, yes. it seems like. Mm -hmm. Which makes sense. Yep. But for the, I, the I mentor they were, figure... Yeah. I think they were doing a good job. Awesome. I really only got to see her and Lan, and Lan was good. Um, I got to see just a little bit of the other ones. I didn't get enough to judge. I'm kind of excited um, yeah. for Leandrin. Yeah. The mm -hmm. actress they chose. So to recap, when asked what his favorite episodes of the show were, Brandon answered that episode six was his favorite, but he liked all of them. He specifically mentioned the first two episodes and episode seven as being good, obviously in addition to episode six. Now to be clear here, Brandon has not seen the episodes, but he has read all of the scripts. He was present for some of the filming, but he doesn't have a major role in the production outside of being an advisor to Rafe Judkins, who's the showrunner. Now, in saying that episode six is his favorite, that certainly hints at some good rising action in the series, as that's the third to last episode. Episode six is titled The Flame of Tarvalin and is preceded by The Dragon Reborn for episode five. Now, if I had my guess, which I do, this is my channel, <laughs> I I'm going to go ahead and say that episode six will be The Gentling of Loghain, and episode five will be his capture. Rafe has previously said that Loghain will have an emotional part and it just screams gentling to me. And if that's Brandon's favorite episode, then that makes me feel like something pretty dramatic is gonna happen in episode six. Brandon did say that all of season one is really good and he thinks that people are going to be very happy with it, but there are going to be changes. Brandon described the changes as sort of like the changes made to Lord of the Rings uh, with Peter Jackson's adaptation of it. And that turned out pretty okay, I think. He has previously told us to be prepared for some changes as they were necessary for the adaptation and to think of the TV show like another turning of the Wheel of Time. The last thing that Brandon said that I wanna talk about were his comments on Rosamund Pike as Moraine. He said that she is so good. This shouldn't really be surprising if you've watched Rosamund Pike act like ever. Hearing him talk about this though gets me super super excited to see the show and we're really not that far away from it. We'll have more on Rosamund a little later. Next let's move on to two stories that are not exactly related to the Wheel of Time directly but they do have some connection. First let's talk about The Green Knight. This is a movie that is currently out in theaters directed by David Lowry. David Lowry has been leaked to be connected to the Wheel of Time potentially as a director for season two. Now I mentioned this in a previous news video, but now that I've seen The Green Knight twice, and while it's certainly not going to be a movie that everyone loves due to its style and pace, this is definitely a director who knows how to use visuals, editing, and to tell a story without exposition. This movie is immaculately made and it has me extremely excited to see what he can do for the Wheel of Time. Now if you've seen The Green Knight make sure to let me know in the comments of the video how well you think David Lowry did and at what you think of him maybe directing episodes of The Wheel of Time. Again not really a Green Knight review video but the movie was really good. I know some people are not going to like it but the things that were great about it I think will lend very well to The Wheel of Time. My thoughts. The other story is of course the Lord of the Rings TV show announcing that they have finished filming and they have a teaser image with an exact release date. They announced with a photo that the show will release on September 2nd, 2022, which is about 13 months from now. Now, outside of some fans being excited about that, I'm kind of one of them, I've seen some Wheel of Time fans upset that we are only months away and we do not have an exact release date and also upset that we did not get that ourselves 13 months ago. So I'll first say I do find it somewhat strange that we do not have an exact release date and I wish Amazon would just give us one, but there are some extenuating circumstances that I think have a couple differences between this and Lord of the Rings. For one, the production of Lord of the Rings was completely pushed back due to COVID, whereas the Wheel of Time was interrupted. This is an important distinction as there was a lot more uncertainty on when they would be able to finish shooting the Wheel of Time, let alone when they would finish post-production. 
Now keep in mind, it's cool they have a release date, but they're more than a year out and just finished filming. We are getting a show less than six months after the completion of filming. So that begs the question, why would Amazon release the release date for Lord of the Rings at all this early? And I think the answer there is, is they want to own the dates. Many of these streaming services will schedule their big releases around other major releases from other streaming services. Lord of the Rings has the largest built-in fan base of any fantasy series out there. So locking down the dates they want make everyone else schedule around them, not the other way around. They really couldn't have done this with the Wheel of Time because as big as the fan base is, it's still a show that is gonna need non-readers to know about it. And I can't imagine that Amazon wants to be competing for fantasy fans with The Witcher, for instance. Hence, they waited until the more established Witcher TV show released its season two schedule and then they announced when Wheel of Time was coming out. That's just my thought, but I think it makes sense. One other thing of note is that September 2nd is a Friday, which falls in line with Amazon's tradition of releasing shows on Fridays. Now this means that the Wheel of Time will likely release on a Friday as well, narrowing our list of release dates down to the 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th of November. If I had to bet, I'd bet on November 12th, but that is just an educated guess. Next up for the news, let's talk about a potential Elaine Tricant. Now keep in mind, what we are about to talk about has not been officially confirmed, but the coincidences are lining up and pointing to the fact that we may have our Elaine. So this started with a post to Instagram that showed Madeline Madden, Hamad Animashan, Zoe Robbins, and Zibel Lamenti hanging out with another actress that they labeled Sierra. The group of them were in Prague and all associated with the show with the exception of Sierra. She was not tagged in the photo, so it took a bit of research, but it turns out that the actress's name was Sierra Coveney. Now, the post was immediately pulled down, which typically indicates that something was posted that production did not like. The only thing here could possibly be Sierra, really, which has led many to speculate that she might be Elaine Tricand. Now, they've just started season two filming, and this would line up with the fact that it doesn't look like Elaine was going to show up in season one, and so it makes sense that season two, here we go, this is Tricand. So who is Sierra? Well, she's an actress from the UK with credits for The Amazing World of Emma, Nothing Up My Sleeve, and The Track. Now, I haven't seen any of those things, and she appears to be relatively new in terms of acting experience, but she certainly looks the part of Elaine to me. What do you guys all think? Do you think this is our Elaine? What do you think about her look, if she is? Um, make sure to let me know in the comments of the video. Also, let me send you over to myself real quick for a quick word from the video sponsor. Self, take it away. Hey everybody, I want to thank the video sponsor, Magic Spoon. Growing up, cereal was one of the best parts of being a kid but I sort of stopped eating it as I got older, mostly because I realized that it was essentially just eating pure sugar. <laughs> Lately, I've been cutting back on some carbs. Uh, I'm going back on the keto diet, and I'm always looking for options when it comes to foods that are low carb, uh, but they also taste really good. Now, Magic Spoon has been an incredible find for me. There are zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein, and only four net carbs in each serving, not to mention it's like only 140 calories per serving. So if you're doing keto or you're just trying to keep your carbs a bit lower, or if you just want to have a healthier alternative to regular garbage cereal that doesn't taste like cardboard at least, uh, you're going to love Magic Spoon. There are four flavors that I absolutely love, the cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter flavors. I specifically love fruity as it tastes literally exactly like Fruit Loops, uh, but without all the garbage sugar. You really can't tell the difference. So if you're looking for a keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb cereal, click the link in the description of the video and grab a variety pack. Try it today. Make sure to use the promo code NABLESS at checkout. You're gonna get $5 off your order. You can also just head to magicspoon.com forward slash NABLESS and also get that discount. Now they're so confident though in the product that they are backing it with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So it's, it's totally a no brainer, check it out. Again, click the link below and use the code NABLESS and save five bucks today. Thank you for checking it out and now back to the video. Thank you, Self, that was great. Now let's get back to the video. All right. Let's talk about our next piece of news, and that is a couple new book covers that are coming out for The Wheel of Time. Now, it isn't really a surprise as book publishers always release new versions of books to correspond with an adaptation, 
But I think this simply makes things feel a bit more real that it's coming. I, especially with the second book cover, which we'll look at in a second. First, let's take a look at a new set of covers for the entire series from Orbit, who's a book publisher in the UK. Now they've come up with new covers for each of the 15 books of the series. The covers are more sweeping shots of landscapes in the series than actual depictions of events within the books. I like the art and the style of the covers, but I do wish they were a little bit more closely tied to the books. They are very loosely based on landscapes from the individual books or themes from those books, but I wish it was just a little bit more obvious to what landscapes are being represented. I do like the art there. One thing that we are lacking in the art department with the Wheel of Time, for instance, is a lot of good landscape art or landscape paintings of scenes from the books. These covers could have been a really cool way to show us some of those. So I think there's maybe a missed opportunity there, but I still like the look of them. I'm just not sure how I feel about them as Wheel of Time covers. Then we got another cover release, this time from Tor Books, the original American publisher of the Wheel of Time. Now they released a new cover for Eye of the World with artwork from the Amazon promotional poster, that was released at Comic-Con, which we will talk about more here in a minute. The newer cover bears the new Wheel of Time logo and a badge about the upcoming TV show, clearly making this a cover meant to grab new readers that will be coming in with the show. I'll talk about the picture of Moraine and the structure around her here in a minute, so I won't talk about about that right now, but the fact that these are slated to release in late September and early October tells you that this is part of the marketing push, which again, just picture walking into your Barnes and Noble or whatever bookstore you go to, and then you're walking up and there's an end cap with Eye of the World and other Wheel of Time books featured with this new cover, and it says being adapted into a TV show. People that are just browsing bookstores will pick that up and check it out and read it now because it's gonna be on TV, and people love the idea of having read a book and knowing what's gonna happen before the TV show. So I, I think it'll bring in some new casual book readers. It's one thing that's pretty exciting to me. It reminds me back in the day when they used to actually feature Wheel of Time books in every bookstore. So it's kind of exciting. Our last piece of news is something that I've talked about at length on the Dusty Wheel and on our podcast, Tarball and After Dark. But I have not had the chance to talk about it on the channel due to getting sick and losing my voice for two weeks. But if you were not aware, Wheel of Time showrunner Rafe Judkins was on a panel at Comic-Con online a few weeks back. There, he gave an interview and released a promotional poster for the show as well as giving us an update on the release date for the show. Now, if you want to hear me talk at length on the subject, again, go check out the live reaction video on the Dusty Wheel with myself and Daniel Green. You can also check out episode 20 of Tarval and After Dark, where we talk about it for a while as well. Today, though, I want to spend some time breaking down Rafe's comments in the interview, because I think that there are some really good things he said there, and then I'll talk generally about the poster and what I like and what I don't like about it. Let's start with Rafe's comments in the interview. Now, obviously, I'm not going to address everything he said. Go watch the interview for that. But I will talk about what I thought was the most important stuff he said. So kicking it off, he talks a little bit about where the show will fit in terms of fantasy audiences. He says that it will feel somewhere between Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones. It's funny that he said that because when I'm explaining Wheel of Time to non-book readers, I will typically say almost the same thing. What I'm hoping is that the show will attract both of those fan bases and then hold on to them because it offers something to both. He also mentioned that they are staying as close to the books as they can in the adaptation, but that it's just that, an adaptation. And there are going to be changes because it's the change of medium. Now that is not something the showrunners have been shy about. There are certainly going to be changes. In the past, Rafe has said every time they made a change, they wanted to know why they had to do it, not just change things for the sake of making a change. I think the most realistic fans understand that, that there are gonna need to be changes but I'm glad that they are setting the expectations right. Rafe was then asked about the cast and the host mentioned that the Wheel of Time has a very global cast with a level of diversity not typically seen in fantasy. Rafe responded by saying that they were very proud of that and that the world that Robert Jordan built was the most diverse fantasy world of any other fantasy series of its time. They wanted to reflect that in the casting for the show and they've done that. So I'm absolutely thrilled with the cast and I'm super excited to see them on screen. There are literally two Oscar nominated actresses in this cast, which is nuts for a TV show. Speaking of which, Rafe was asked about Rosamund as Moraine and he said that Rosamund just understands her. He told a story about Rosamund telling him that she knows this woman or knows Moraine. That gets me excited because an actress of Rosamund's caliber that can really connect with her character is usually a setup for a great performance. Now there are a couple other things Rafe mentioned, but probably the most important in my eyes was he said that the writer's team storyboarded this series out for eight seasons. 
and that's how they are writing the show. Now that's incredible to me because that's quite a bit of confidence to craft your story based around being on the air for eight to 10 years. I think that based on that, we can take that Amazon is very committed to this series. We do know that Jeff Bezos was a huge Wheel of Time fan personally, and he was committed to bringing this show to life. That can be backed up by the fact that they are shooting season two before we even have an exact season one release date, let alone it actually being released. I can also speak to this from some personal contacts that they are preparing the cast as though they might be on the air for a long time. Now this has me pretty excited. The real question though, do you guys think that they can do the show in eight seasons? Let me know in the comments of the video what you think on that. Now let's pivot to talking about the poster. Again, I've talked about this at length in other places, so I'm just gonna give some basics here. Yes, the caption says that it's an iconic scene from the eye of the world, and the structure that Moraine is standing in is a way gate. There's no question there, that's what they're calling it, it is a way gate. And your first reaction is 100% correct in that that certainly does not look like a way gate from the books. I do think it looks cool, but I am hoping that there are not changes simply because they look cool. So taking Rafe's comments from the past in mind where he said that they want to have the specific reasons about why they need to make a change, I'm gonna take him at his word here until I have a reason not to and say that there may be a narrative reason for this to be different. For instance, they might have felt the need to combine portal stones and way gates to simplify the story. I'm just making something up here, and this was the result of that. Again, I'm speculating, that's just a guess, but things like that might necessitate something as a change. I will not be super happy though if they just change things to change them to make them look cooler to the detriment of the story. I just think it's too soon to tell if that's what's happening here or not. This is also a promotional piece, and oftentimes promotional material is made just for that purpose. A good example is the Game of Thrones promotional material with the entire cast taking their turn sitting on the Iron Throne. That is obviously something that doesn't happen in the show and was done just to hype things up. In terms of the release date, we were given a release date of November of this year, which is exciting because now we know at least somewhat when to expect this. I do wish that we could get an exact release date and release schedule, but I'm sure that that's gonna come here soon. So what do you guys think of the news? Does this stuff make you more or less excited? Let me know in the comments of the video. Also make sure to check out Magic Spoon. You can find that link in the description of this video as well. Again, like the video if you liked it and make sure to subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time content. You can also follow me on Twitter at BlissNay and be paying attention to thegreatblight.com as there will be changes coming. Thank you to everybody who supports the channel and the website, thegreatblight.com over on Patreon. You are all the best. And if you'd like to support the channel, that is the best way to do it. You can find those links in the description of this video as well. Thanks for watching guys. And until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on the rope of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?